Hi, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to use sessions in your Express.js web application. So a lot of the documentation you see online nowadays is pretty out of date. We're currently on uh, Express 4.11. Uh, a lot of the documentation you'll find online is for 3. So things have changed. It, it has become a little different and it can be a little difficult to follow if you're coming from an old version or if you're like me uh, and came straight to 4 uh, it, it was a little difficult for me as well especially in certain scenarios which I will elaborate here so I'm assuming that you've already read my or viewed my previous post regarding Express uh, if you haven't it's probably worth checking out you can find it on my on my written blog or uh, somewhere in my YouTube channel it should show up so let's go ahead and start by creating a new Express project I'm going to go ahead and create it on my desktop. All right. So now in my in my text editor, I'm going to go ahead and open that project. And I am going to go ahead and run the install to install all of the express dependencies. Oh, I'm not in the right directory. All right, now all the dependencies are set up and in theory what we can do is we could run Express right now. I'll show you right now. So now we have an Express website and it can be found on localhost port 3000 by default. So welcome to Express. All right, so we're, we're not gonna end there. We, we actually now need to install the uh, middleware for sessions because session management is not bundled with Express anymore. So what we want to do is first take a look at your package.json. We're going to use Node to download and then save it into the, the dependencies list. So that way you can redeploy it easier uh, in case you store it on Git or if you push it to a remote web server. So what we're going to do is we're going to run the command npm install express session and then we're going to do hyphen hyphen save and by doing the hyphen hyphen save it's going to add it into our package.json which it did right here and that's that's again convenient if you're going to redeploy elsewhere so let's go ahead and clear that now we're going to go ahead and add uh, the required uh, includes into our app.js file so when we do this, it's very important that all of the session stuff happens after the body parser. Otherwise, we're going to get some strange results. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to include it. So var session equals require and then express session. And then drop down a little lower right here below the cookie parser. And we're going to go ahead and add the following app.use and then we're going to say session and then inside of an object we're going to say res resolve or not resolve resave true because in the in the latest version of uh, express session uh, it says that you you have to list these fields not listing these fields is uh, depreciated so resave is true and I'm going to say save uninitialized equals true. Hopefully I spelled that right. I, I make a lot of typos when I type that one. And then we're going to say secret. And we're going to type in some random string here. Um, and what the secret does is it actually um, adds a little little layer of security to the session. It, it uh, hashes it with whatever our secret is. And then you could add optional um, other elements to this as well. Uh, it's all listed in the official Express session documentation. We're just going to stop here because this is the bare minimum. I'm going to throw a semicolon in there. So now Express session is in our project. We're going to verify that everything still runs here. 
npm start. Yep, no errors. So to use this in our code, let's go ahead and visit one of our routes. We're going to say index.js, for example. So the session can be accessed like the following. Uh, it's not resource. Uh, request dot session, and then whatever the session might be. So let's say, let's say the following: if request dot session dot fresh visit, or let's say visit count. So what we're saying here is if the visit count uh, does not exist in the session, then we're going to set it. So we're going to say request dot session dot visit count equals one. So that way we won't get an undefined error. And then else we're going to say request dot session dot visit count plus plus. Because you don't want to you don't want to do math on on an undefined variable. You're going to get all kinds of errors. So what we're going to do next is we are going to go to our, a different route here, the user's route. I don't know, I'm just using the defaults here. And we are going to do a console.log, and we're just going to spit out the whole session here. doesn't really matter. You could go down to specifics if you want. Uh, for this purpose, nah, we won't. All right, so let's go ahead and start this up. And let's go into our web browser here. And we are going to refresh the page. So now in theory, our session has been set. Um, it won't say it here, but going back, we're gonna go to our user route. I think it's this. No, it's not that. Uh, what is our user route? Let's find out here. Our users route up, oh, it's slash users, I believe. What? Yeah, users, not user. So I'm going to go here. And we're going to look at our output here. And we can see that the visit count was is one. So the session did get set, it got set to one. So if we go back to our root here, and then let's go ahead and go back to users. Should say two. Yeah, it says two. So just like that, you saw how easy it is to use sessions inside of your Express project. So one thing to note that really threw me off. Uh, it took me a long time to to research out why the heck this was happening. Is if you want to set sessions, it has to be before. Uh, you try to render anything. So what I was doing is I was using Mongoose and I was trying to set the session inside of a callback but the render was not inside of the callback as well. So because of that it was it was uh, trying to render before the session was set and then it was pretty much invalidating that save on the session. So although Mongoose might not make sense to everyone. I'm gonna I'm gonna show a little example, a little pseudocode of uh, what I was trying to do. Uh, it's it's pretty generic. It's just uh, trying to give you a better visualization of of what I meant as far as a callback. So let's go to do the following. All right, 
So this is this is what I was initially trying to do. Let me copy and paste this so I don't have to type it. So I was trying to access data from this mongoose from this MongoDB uh, database and set the session based on the data. And then I was rendering it outside of the callback. And like I said, it was invalidating the save. So what I really needed to do in order to make this work su successfully is I needed to put the oh. I needed to put the render inside of the callback as well. Um, and this, this made it so that way it saved. And it, I, I must have uh, spent hours trying to figure out why this wasn't working. And this ended up being the reason. So if you're, if you're working with callbacks and you're working with sessions, make sure you set the session before you try to render.